Hi guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do Vlogmas Day 17. And I'm going to be talking about today my a few of my anticipated reads for 2024 because I mean I just saw a few here and there. I haven't like been digging deep like all the way through the year. But these are just a few that I came across that I thought might be interesting for me to check out. Let's get started. So the first book on my list is by Ky Kylie Reed, and it's called Come and Get It. Now, if you remember, she wrote the year, I think it's the year of 2020, the book called Such a Fun Age, which I did read that one. And I even discussed it with my podcast buddy, Christy. We did a discussion of it on Instagram Live, and we both thought it was just, you know, two and a half, three stars. You know, it was just, it was all right. She wasn't, you know, coming out strong. I think we just gave it like a three. So I'm interested to see, because this is three years later, or should I say four years later, see if things have changed and if she's willing to really go the distance. Because such a fun age could have been very good but she towed the line and refused to go all the way. Uh, so we're going to see what's going on with this one. I'll tell you a little bit of what it's about. It's 2017 at the University of Arkansas. Millie Cousins, a senior resident assistant, wants to graduate, get a job, and buy a house. So when Agatha Paul, a visiting professor and writer, offers Millie an easy yet unusual opportunity, she jumps at the chance. But Millie's starry-eyed hustle becomes jeopardized by odd new friends, vengeful dorm pranks, and illicit intrigue. A fresh, intimate portrait of desire, consumption, and reckless abandon, come and get it, is a tension-filled story about money, indiscretion, and bad behavior. So I'm interested to see where she's going to go with this one because, like I said, you know, the first one, she could have done even better than she did, but she wasn't willing to risk it. Let's see what she's going to do this time. Okay, the next book on my list is The Spoiled Heart, and that is by Sunjeev Saota, and he wrote the book called The Year of the Runaways, which I read a couple of years ago in my book club here on Norm in Normandy, and we, well, I loved it. I, I can't remember if they loved it, but I know I loved it. So let's see what this one is about. Nayan Olak is mounting a run for general secretary of the union that has become the center of his life since losing his family in a tragic accident 20 years earlier when he finds himself inexorably drawn to an inscrutable woman he keeps seeing around town. Passing the rundown house where she, Helen, he's learned her name is, lives with her teenage son, Brandon. He wonders why they've returned to this place and why they appear so guarded. As Nayan's involvement with Helen and Brandon deepens, his differences with his rival in the race to lead the union, a privileged young woman named Mega, spin out of control when he unknowingly barrels toward long-held secrets about how his and Helen's past might be connected, much more is threatened than his chance of winning. I'm I'm kind of curious because the thing about Sunjeev Saota, which I noticed in the year of the runaways, is he had he takes he puts a lot of attention to detail and his scenarios feel extremely real. You almost forget that you're reading a fiction novel. I think it's I think it's really it's gonna be a really good one. And it's gonna be something that we're not really thinking about. I was marveled how in the year of the runaways he went about talking about uh illegal Ill immigrants in the UK and everything they go through, and he was very precise about telling that story. So I'm I'm curious to see where this one is going to go. It sounds like it could be good. Okay, the next book on my list is Sweetness in the Skin, and it's by Ishi Robinson. Okay, so this one popped up on my radar, and I thought it sounded very interesting. It says, 
Pumpkin Patterson is a 13-year-old girl living in a tiny two-room house in Kingston, Jamaica with her grandmother who wants to improve the family's social standing. Her aunt Sophie, who dreams of a new life in Paris for her and Pumpkin, and her mother Paulette, who's rarely home. When Sophie is offered the chance to move to France for work, she seizes the opportunity and promises to send for her niece in one year's time. All Pumpkin has to do is pass her French entrance exam so she can attend school there. But when Pumpkin's grandmother dies, she's left alone with her volatile mother. And as soon as her estranged father turns up, as lazy and conniving as ever, the household's fortunes take a turn for the worse. Okay, so as you can see, in the beginning, you're kind of thinking, is this a YA? And then it, you know, it, tur it turned, no, it is not YA. So I don't know this writer, is she Robinson? I'm thinking this is a debut. I'm not really sure, but it sounds really good. And I like the way the cover looks. I think the cover looks intriguing. I like the way it sounds. So we're, we're going to see. Okay, the next book on my list is a short story collection by Russell Banks, and it's called American Spirits. Now, I haven't read a Russell Banks in a very long while. The last Russell Banks I read was with my book club here in Normandy, and it was a novel, but this is a short stories, and it just sounds super intriguing, and it looks like it could be a little, like, emotional, so it says, her husband sells property to a mysterious temperamental stranger and is hounded on social media when he publicly questions the man's character. A couple grows concerned when an enigmatic family moves next door and the children start sneaking over to beg for help. Two dangerous criminals kidnap an elderly couple and began blackmailing their grandson, demanding that he pay back what he owes. Suspenseful, thrilling, and expertly crafted, American Spirits explores the hostile undercurrents of our communities and American politics at large, as well as the ways local tragedies can, can be both devastating and somehow everyday. So yeah, this looks like it's going to be a little... I hope it ain't going to keep me up at night. Okay, but uh, it's three big short stories. So I hope uh, this one is going to be good because, yeah, I like Russell Banks. His, his writing is very good. The next one is called Acts of Forgiveness by Maura Cheeks. Now, this one came over my Goodreads when I was looking for something else. And I saw it and I thought, oh, this might be kind of interesting. Okay, so it says... Every American waits with bated breath to see whether or not the country's first female president will pass the Forgiveness Act. The bill would allow black families to claim up to $175,000 if they can prove they are the descendants of slaves. And for ambitious single mother Willie Revel, the bill could be a long-awaited form of redemption. A decade ago, Willie gave up her burgeoning journalism career to help run her father's struggling construction company in Philadelphia. And she has reluctantly put family first without being able to forget who she might have become. Now she's back living with her parents and her young daughter while trying to keep her family from going into bankruptcy. Could the Forgiveness Act uncover her forgotten roots? while also helping save their beloved home and her father's life work. Yeah, this one right here, it sounds like it could be really good. I don't know Maura Cheek, so yeah. I'm interested in reading this one. I think it would be, you know, an interesting, a little bit of a different kind of read. The next book on my list is... Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame by Olivia Ford. Okay, so I decided when I saw this one, I said I would l love to attempt to read this one because the main character is a woman of 77 years old. 
I don't know about you, but I have not read a ton of books with male nor female characters that are over 70 years old. And I feel like books with characters that are older is something that is missing in the landscape right now of writing. So I'm going to give this one a go. And it says, Whisk into an unfamiliar world of cameras and timed challenges. Jenny delights in a newfound independence. But that independence and the stress of the competition starts to unearth memories buried d decades ago. Chocolate tea cakes remind her of a furtive errand involving a wedding ring. Sugar donuts call up a stranger's kind act. A simple cottage loaf brings back the moments her life changed forever. With her baking star rising, Jenny struggles to keep a lid on that first secret, a long concealed deceit that threatens to shatter the very foundation of her marriage. It's the only time in six decades that she's kept something from Bernard. By putting herself in the limelight, has Jenny created a recipe for disaster? So this one, yeah, this one sounds like something that could be uh, kind of interesting to read to see how Olivia Ford, you know, decides to paint this character of over 70 years old. I'm, I'm interested. The next book on my list is James by Percival Everett. I love Percival Everett. Now, this is a retelling of Huckleberry Finn. So, looks like I might be reading Huckleberry Finn again because I read it like years ago. I read it in school and I read it on my own. So, I've read it twice. So, now I'm going to read it again because it's many years later and be ready for James. And I, you know, and I don't want to miss any of the satire that he he's going to have going on in there. Because I know it's going to be a lot of good satire in there. So it says, when the enslaved Jim overhears that he is about to be sold to a man in New Orleans, separated from his wife and daughter forever, he decides to hide on nearby Jackson Island until he can formulate a plan. Meanwhile, Huck Finn has faked his own death to escape his violent father recently returned to town. As all readers of American literature know, thus begins a dangerous and tr transcendent journey by raft down the Mississippi River toward the elusive and too often unreliable promise of the free states and beyond. Okay, I'm not saying nothing else. I think that's sufficient enough. Y'all want to read this one. I have a feeling. So the last book on my list is The Concierge, and this is by Abby Corson. Now, I've not read anything by Abby Corson, but from the looks of this cover and from what I read, I'm kind of interested to see where this is going to go. So it says, I suppose it would be fitting to explain that I am talking into a dictaphone and the lovely Helen will be typing out my story for you to read. She will have a certain amount of creative control, sorting out moments when I get a bit tongue tied or slightly muddled but I have told her to leave in as much as possible so as not to miss any of the important bits. This is my account of the Cavan Green Hotel murder. Best we get that bit in early on. Okay, so you, you can see that it is a murder mystery. I mean, I haven't read any murder mysteries at all this year, so... Why not, you know, start off the year with one? I think it would be a good uh, read. So I'll, I'll let you know about that one because I haven't, you know, you know, I don't know this writer, but I'm just interested by what I read. So that's it. That's all I have for you today. Comment below and tell me which one of these you're interested in because, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. One of these, maybe if there's any of these that you think, no, 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 girl, don't do it. Put that below if there's one that you think, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. It's not going to be good. I want to know what y'all thinking. All righty. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.